from the time Cherry appeared in that 4.3 Roses and Muskets event. I knew I would be pulling for her whenever she released. There was just no question about it. Assertive, sassy, and the expression to match. Not to mention easily voted best dressed in the yearbook. Absolutely no other outcome was ever going to happen. Yeah, perfect. Some decent golden troop artifacts already in my inventory, thanks to farming for Farina. Which hasn't gone anywhere, but that's okay. Yeah, C1, so she can work with my cracked out Navia and Noel. Is C1 well bait? Yeah. But I don't care because you can never have enough stylishly good looking Geo characters. Yeah, maxed talent so I can do as much. Ah, uh, wait. Let me check what I need here. Light books? I haven't farmed these books in ages. Well, I guess the talents have to stay level 1 for now. Yeah, level 90 characters so I can have the highest base stats possible. Yeah, wait. Let me check what I need here too. Bruh, Dendrobium? Who even used this outside of Chiori? Dude, literally just Kujo Sara? That's insane. This has been in the game for like over two years just for one character. And what else do I need? The Spectrals? Well, at least I'm farmed up on those. I've never really known what everyone's deal is with Spectral farming anyway. They aren't that hard to farm. Oh well. And shoot. I need the Fontaine and Coppelia boss mats as well. Well, I guess it's time for another round of Shotgun Impact. And apparently she uses the lightless silk strings for talent materials as well. Hmm. Wow. So yeah, another character, another exciting week of hard farming. It can't be escaped. You get a character, you gotta build them. That's it. Full stop. Unless they're just gonna sit in your inventory and look pretty, but I mean, at that point, why would you even do a pull on them? I definitely don't have a C1 Edo that I've had for over a year now, still sitting at level 1. I certainly don't have a talent level 1 Albedo on my account that I've had ever since his very first run in the game and sporting his Cinnabar Spindle. I would never sit on an unleveled Venti, nor pull on him just for the sake of saying I own every single Archon, would I? Nah, never. I always pull a character with the full intention of building them ASAP, and with spicy Miss Chiori, there's no exceptions. The building started frame one. Well, that's to say. The things that could start frame one, such as the artifacts. Boy, I looked out there, but it's actually kind of ironic that the things holding me back from playing my Chiori immediately aren't even the RNG aspects like artifact farming. It's the normal tasks holding me back. I need world boss materials, I need weekly boss materials. I need talent books, I need dendrobiums, like dude. If I wasn't an actual fan of fighting spectrals, it might actually be kind of crazy. Just so happen I pre-farmed on by circumstance of me just killing the things anytime I see them, but I can only imagine how Chiori fans who do hate fighting spectrals are feeling right now. About the start of the year, I ordered this heavy entertainment stand for my TV, PS5, and Nintendo Switch, and other odds and ends. I love it, it's nice, it's sturdy, it's heavy, 
but it came in pieces and I had to assemble the thing bit by bit, piece by piece. It took me hours, and while I loved the end result and would do it again if I had to, being in possession of something but not being able to use it until you put tons of your own work into it can make you feel some type of way. It starts as impatience, you just want the thing to work. Then it grows to determination while you're in the midst of putting it together. And then once finished, it settles in satisfaction as you use the thing you put so much blood and sweat into. Genshin characters remind me of this to be honest. It's basically buying a new entertainment console in pieces. You gotta put it together yourself. The boards, the screws, the plates. It's literally some assembly required in this game. That's kind of funny in a way. I mean, sure, lots of games have progressive systems where you have to build your character up in levels. That's not what's so funny. In Genshin case, it's more so the fact that it's baked into the game loop itself and even monetized if you're not patient enough to get through it. Want to play your character out of the box? You better do some resin refreshes, or if not, have at least pre-farmed for them to some degree. Or boy, you're gonna have a time ahead of you before you can actually use your character. It's a wild thought when you really think about it. Like, dude, you can straight up pay $200 for a character and that crap be near unusable even a week later. Especially when new artifacts are involved. It's not the biggest issue. Building characters is a satisfying part of the game after all. One of the most satisfying upon completion. If there is such a thing as a finished completed character, 99% of characters can be improved in some way. But it is something to be observed. The character hype is a driving force behind the game's longevity. Characters are drip marketed weeks ahead of their release. Characters appear in stories and events before their release. When the characters drop, some people have had so much character hype thrown their way that nothing short of instant gratification will quench their thirst. And Hoyleverse knows this. So the leveling is offered in ways to make you want to get as much out of the game in one go as you can. Two of the best examples of this are weapon material domains and talent book domains. They rotate by the day. Dude, they rotate, that's crazy. Either you use all your resin for the day and wait three more days for the domain to come back around again, or you break into the resin refreshes or fragile resins, which fragiles really aren't recommended for weapon or talent mat domains, since at least on the correct days you are 100% guaranteed to get what you want. Fragiles are recommended for artifact domains since they have so much RNG in them. But the temptation is there, right? Maybe just one little refresh will be okay? Maybe two fragiles? Do I really want to wait three days for this? I just need one more domain clear and then I can do my last character ascension. Yeah, I don't know about others, but I've personally fallen into this trap countless times. It feels bad, man. Like, it actually makes sense that out of the artifact domains, weapon mat domains, and talent book domains, that artifact domains don't rotate by the day. Can you imagine if they did? On top of all the RNG, now you have to contend with the added layer of RNG of it being the correct day? Yeah, that would just be too much. Probably exactly why artifact domains don't subscribe to the three day rotation like other domains. At least weapon material and talent book domains aren't RNG in the sense of not knowing what you're going to get. But man, the daily wait is painful especially because talents and weapons can get your character up to a serviceable level alone. They're guaranteed stats, unlike artifacts. There is that pre-farming route you could go though, which many players do do. 
heck, I've pre-farmed before a character has released before, which does significantly help speed up a character's building process, but even that can only go so far. For one, any pre-farming done for an upcoming character is farming not done for the characters you already own. It can get your new character at least up and running though, but even then you have to be pretty careful about doing it. I've seen testimonies online of people who expected a character to run a particular material and then find out later it's not that boss material or talent material or whatever and feel completely duped by their own self-own. This especially happens when people <coughs> get very early psychic visions of what a character might need, but that's the risk they're taking. For two though, sometimes when it comes to pre-farming, you literally just can't. Every now and then when new regions, sub-regions, new domains, or new bosses drop, a character is released right alongside the very thing they need. A good recent example of this was just last patch with Shen Yun. She needs clear water jades which can be found around Shen Yu Vale and her boss material is the Cloud Seam Scale, also obtained in Shen Yu Vale. Thing is, Shen Yun was released with Shen Yu Vale. Literally no way to pre-farm that even if you did 100% know what she would be using. Though, at least with the Jades, you could technically try connecting to co-op with other players to pick their worlds. But on the other hand, good luck since everyone else is farming their day one character. As for the boss material, if you want a high level day one character, you're free to fight them as much as you like. Just provided you have the resin, fragiles, and prima gems to do it. Though you can only resin refresh a limited number of times per day too, but hey, that doesn't stop some people. As I said, I've actually dumped a couple of fragiles before solely for world bosses, just to make it go faster. But that's really not good. Like, really. Which, some might say, it's fragiles. They're a resource that you can get for free from different sources. Which is true, but a resource is a resource. And, to be frank, not all Fragiles are free. I mean, you can get a double amount of Fragiles from the Battle Pass if you pay, for instance. There is a value assigned to them. Even if all the Fragiles you own are free, that is monetary value you're using when you spend them. It's hard to justify using them for anything other than artifacts because of that. It might suck waiting for resin to recharge just to do normal world bosses, but as a matter of eventuality, you'll get there. Though, the weekly boss materials are another story because dude, holy. I'm glad I have enough dream solvents in my back pocket to where I can just convert whatever weekly material I get because honestly, maxing a character's talents could take forever otherwise. I remember leveling up my Nahida. It just kept on dodging her material, the puppet strings. Infuriating having to convert. Then Wanderer released and guess what? He used the bells, but what did it start giving me constantly? Puppet strings. Dude. I'm not much of a conspiracy person, but for this tiny period, I began to question whether there's some rigging. Though in the end, I guess there's hardly any incentive for weekly material rigging. In contrast to Honkai Star Rail, where you can do the same weekly boss three times if you want to, you can only do a particular weekly boss once in Genshin. You can't res and refresh to retry a weekly boss or anything, which would be a monetary incentive for Hoyo. The time gating on weekly bosses is the most baffling gate in the game. 
because unlike gating by the day of the week with the material domains or RNG gating with the artifact domains which gets Hoyo richer due to resin refreshes you can't refresh a weekly boss which means nobody wins we can expedite our talent levels and Hoyo makes nothing off of it I can't think of any reason for this gate on either side player or money hungry company and it's especially puzzling when put next to the regular world bosses that you can do over and over. If you really want to, you can play all day refreshing and using fragiles to repeatedly rip on the Capellius Capellia fight to expedite your character to level 90. I mean, it's not recommended to use your resources like that, but you technically can if you don't want to wait. I have before especially when I reach character level 70 or 80 and just want to be done with the process. Possible. Point is, you can do this if you're impatient. And yet, the weekly bosses aren't the same way? Why? If anyone knows, please do tell me. And no, I'm not saying that rhetorically. I mean, really comment or message me and tell me. Because from my end, weekly bosses just seem arbitrarily gated with no benefit to either player or company. The only thing I can think of is that they are really proud of their weekly bosses and don't want players to burn out on them. So they force us to only partake in them once a week so our appreciation is artificially extended. I mean, hey, that could be the reason. Though that reason is kind of just throwing spaghetti at the wall, but I mean, I can't think of any other pasta. Anyway, these are just some thoughts on character building. It's a process we've gone through many, many times and will continue to go through many more times. After all, like I said, it is baked into the game loop and characters are the name of the game. I don't care how long it takes, I'm maxing the crap out of my Chiori. But man, it's just a little bit tempting to throw a little at the game to speed it up. And they know that, they want you to get antsy and start throwing them money and resources and using your Prima Gems to expedite the fun you pulled for, or maybe even paid for. Except in the instance of weekly bosses, which is insane, but yeah, we've gone through that. Point is, moral is, hype begets the road of greed for a character's power. Hype begets the road of lust for a character you like. Hype begets the road of jealousy over someone else's better built character and impatience can be an avenue towards these roads if left unchecked. Have fun with the game, but time yourselves, temper yourselves. Don't be like me and use literal prima gems, and thus monetary value, to get a character's world boss materials all because you can't wait just a couple of hours to recharge enough points. I might be hypocritical for saying that, sure, but... Even a smoker can advise you not to smoke, right? Patience is a virtue, they say. Be patient. You'll get there. Unless you want to put out a video by morning time so you're forced to level up your character as quickly as possible. I certainly wouldn't do that, would I? <laughs> Thanks for listening.